Hey, Measuring Hero, Jay here. Back when I was in the United States, we were presented with a problem from a customer. They wanted to do surface roughness measurement of their high performance engine parts. Classically, what we would do is take it to a tactile system and rub a needle across it basically to get the surface roughness. But they didn't want to touch it. They wanted it all non-contact. We were trying to figure out different ways to do it. And in my research, I ran across something called confocal microscopy. Today, what we're going to do is go in to find out what is confocal microscopy. Confocal microscopy was developed back in the 1950s by someone named Marvin Minsky. He's a really interesting person. If you have some time, you should Google him. Um, he's actually not only the inventor of the confocal microscope, but actually one of the godfathers of artificial intelligence. This is what Marvin came up with, right? So historically what would happen is um, if you wanted to uh, measure a part uh, or look at a part through a microscope, you would saturate the light, uh, saturate your sample with light, and then shine it up to a detector which would capture all of the uh, imagery including uh, information that was both in focus and out of focus. Uh, what Marvin decided to do was take a light source and beam it down to a sample down here, right? The sample then would be reflected back up to a detector and uh, the detector would uh, be situated at such a uh, uh, place where uh, the focal plane, or what was in focus of the part, uh, is equal to that of the detector. So of course, uh, if the sample was at the perfect focal plane, the detector would be sharp and in focus. The problem arises if the uh, sample is a little uh, apart from the focal plane, then uh, the detector will also read this information and give you some blurry images. And the same is true for the other way, right? If it's a little uh, uh, beneath the focal plane, um, the detector will also read that blurry information. Let's have a look at what that looks like uh, in practice. So what you see here is as we go down from out of focus to in focus to out of focus again, you see that the image is blurry, it goes from blurry to sharp as it is there, back to blurry. That's us going from here to here from the detector. And that intrinsically is one of the biggest problems with what we call a historic wide field microscopy, just showing everything, right? So Marvin decided to take a pinhole and put it in front of the detector. This is a very, very common practice. Maybe when you were a kid, you made a pinhole camera um, basically what that pinhole does is blocks the light except uh, the very specific light that is the in focus or in focal plane uh, lighting. What will happen then is the light that is out of focus either before, uh, beneath or above the focal plane will get blocked out and only the light that is from the focal plane will hit the detector. Let's look at what that looks like in practice. So here, as we saw before, uh, we had an image that was out of focus and it was blurry, so we saw a blurry image. But here we see there's no image, it's dark, the light isn't coming through. But as it gets in focus, now we see light coming through and all we're seeing at the detector or the camera is in focus imagery, blackness or no light, or in, fo in focus or perfect imagery. So what we can then do is take all of those images, stack them, because remember, what is out of focus is black, right? So all of these images, we just take away all the blackness and there's only light where there's actually information, in focus information. Take all of those images, stack them, and create this topography. At some point when you can create this topography, you can basically make a topography of what the surface roughness is of it. Um, when I saw this technology, I thought, wow, this is great. This could totally solve our customers' needs. Um, and I was even more excited to find out 
Can we make a confocal microscope? Let's go have a look at one. All right, so in microscopy for Zeiss, we actually make two different confocal microscopes. To my right here is the LSM. The newest version is 900, but this is an 800. Uh, this is extremely lab grade, uh, resolves very high. You can see it's on a vibration table and it's extremely uh, delicate, um, meant for a pretty intense measurement. Uh, but what we found over here was something we call the smart proof. The smart proof uh, is a little different take on the confocal microscope. Um, first and foremost, um, you'll see that it's on a normal table uh, because there's a, it's less susceptible to vibration, which is something my customer wanted. Um, also, what you'll see is we've replaced uh, the laser light source with an LED light source, which makes it a lot more robust and kind of easier to replace and maintain. Um, so as I was getting excited to talk to my customer about uh, a potential solution for them, uh, I began to look at what the uh, smart proof was. Uh, intrinsically, what we do here with the smart proof is we replace what uh, Minsky did with a single uh, pinhole uh, and replaced it with a slit mask. A slit mask will allow then more light uh, onto the sensor or the camera. Uh, but in order to, um, uh, to do that, we actually take a, a spinning disc with the split, slip mask uh, and combine it or subtract out the wide field image, which will include all the autofocus uh, um, imagery. Uh, and when you subtract the two, we get a pure confocal image. That image then uh, is the same as what you would get through a pinhole camera. Uh, however, it's acquired much faster. How much faster might you ask? Let's have a look. Here we have some settings um, of this sample here. Uh, and what we'll see here is as we acquire the image, here we're gonna go through a, a, a set of uh, slices. We just took 70 uh, images, and then we're again taking another 70 images. So the first stack was acquired with the slit mask. The second stack was acquired with the wide field, and now we're going through the process of um, combining the two. Now that's already done, so we've already taken our image. Let's have a look uh, at what it is. So here we can see uh, we have this surface texture uh, um, image in black and white, and then what we've done is uh, we've color mapped it based on uh, peaks and valleys, uh, so you can get a very interesting um, representation of that uh, using color. Uh, down here we have a fully isometric view that we can have a look around. We can even automate it in, right in the report. It was really interesting to me to find out that not only did we at Zeiss IQS uh, have a solution to do surface roughness that was non-contact, but that it was developed uh, right here internally in-house. So now that the images are acquired, we can go to the analysis uh, portion of the system. Here you can see that we've got uh, just a kind of view of what it looks like, uh, the, the surface texture of it. And then we've overlaid a color map of, the, um, of it so that you can see kind of the gradient uh, topical view. You can even see from the colors here that a peak to valley measurement of about eight to four is within the two and a half, three micron range. And that's very easy to see right here. We also have an isometric view so that we can uh, go ahead and have a look at any angle of the entire topography. And then of course, as you're aware, that my initial customer wanted to see um, and anal analyze surface roughness. So uh, we can um, uh, pull an RA value. This particular sample was, has an RA value of about 0.59 microns, uh, easily uh, pullable from uh, the data. And in addition uh, to an RA, we can get an SA, which is the same value, except uh, across an entire patch, uh, not just a, uh, um, a single line. As you can see here, the reporting function is uh, quite robust and definitely able to uh, get our customer uh, what they needed. 
What I found really cool about this entire solution was not only were we able to satisfy uh, what our metrology customer needed uh, from a non-contact surface roughness perspective with a confocal microscope, but this was all developed and created in-house. So it was something really special and fun um, to do. I loved researching it, and I hope you uh, liked hearing about what confocal microscopy is and how it can uh, be a good solution for us uh, in our metrology world. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for going on this nerdy journey with me, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to see you next Thursday. Bye now.